And if you think about it, the glossary of index we've been given by culture to talk about race are are, are so, uh, it causes us to be so emotionally triggered. I mean, as soon as, as soon as we see these words, everyone has an emotion immediately. And and sometimes that emotion triggers these words. Well, all lives matter. Black lives matter. And then some people go, well, no, 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 no. Let's talk about it. It's blue lives matter. And then we start having the conversation, then we get to white privilege and go, whoa, 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 I worked for, the, I, I didn't, I, nothing was handed to me. What do you mean by that? And then we go, to, we go here, we go, man, what about white supremacy? And then we, we go into anti-racist and we have this language that is, that we're, we feel forced, and can I say exhausted, tired of the vocabulary that we've been given and it's almost like we all feel stuck. I'll, I'll be honest, I have black liberal friends that know what I do for a living, and they go, hey, this is what you need to say this weekend. Here, here's what you need to say. I have black conservatives that go, no, 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 this is what you need to say. I also have white liberal friends that go, no, 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 this, this is what you need to do. And I have white conservative friends that go, no, 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 this is what you need to do. And then I, I'm married to a Puerto Rican. <laughs> it's like Holy Spirit wife, you know what I mean? So he's like, what do you do? And then you got your friends that are just in the middle, that are just kind of going. So, so you, you have that, that weight that, you know, a lot of people have an opinion about what people that do what I do for a living should be saying from the stage. Uh, my, my story, uh, when, as it pertains to race and how I've been processing it, um, actually changed about three years ago because of a Christmas gift that was given to me by my in-laws. They gave me access to Ancestry DNA. A. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to be careful with Ancestry DNA. A friend of mine got, got an Ancestry DNA kit for his father, only to find out he's not the father. So be careful, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm going to reveal to you my Ancestry DNA. And I, and I want the audience here to relax, okay? I just want you to be relaxed, okay? When you see what you see, do not be surprised. Ladies and gentlemen, um, it comes to find out that I'm 33% Nigerian, which means my wedding was way too short, okay? I don't know if you've ever been to a Nigerian wedding. That, it's, not, it's not an event. It's a week. You have to take days off of work. There's multiple dresses. There, listen, the first time I went to a Nigerian wedding, uh, they started taking up a love offering for the bride from the groom's side, okay? So they're going to the groom's side going, okay, let, you got 20? Okay, great. And th- they started throwing money on the ground. And somebody who, unbeknownst to me, I don't know who this person was, was picking up the money and counting it. One, two, three. Three, and all of a sudden he holds it up. He goes, it is not enough. I go, what is going on? Okay. Like apparently I did my wedding all the way wrong. And so I'm going, okay, 33%. And then I'm going, okay, Western band two peoples, 21%. I ain't never been to Western band two, but hey, maybe I'll go. I, I shared this with a friend. And he said, oh man, this is awesome. Do you know what tribe you're from? I said, Chicago. Wakanda? I don't know, okay? I can't, I gotta figure this thing out. And so then, here, here's where things went south, okay? Things went south right around 5% Scotland? What is this, 2% Wales? Like, no offense, but who's Walesy in here? You know what I mean? Like, like, and that's even a weird term, you know? Who wants to be, who wants to be called Walesy, okay? And then, Ireland, and I'm going, I'm Irish? Like, are you, are you serious? My wife did it, and, and my wife been, has been claiming to be Puerto Rican for forever, but the test showed that she is mostly Portuguese. I looked at her, I said, I need a moment. You have deceived me. The, these, these half, what I thought were African-American, half Puerto Rican children, I have, can I just have a moment to, to just realize that they're mostly Portuguese because of you, okay? I just, I just... I just need a moment. She goes, well, I didn't know you were Irish either. So I'm, I'm like, listen, this is about you, ownership, okay? You need to own your Portuguese, and I own my, my Irish. Now, I mean, here's the reality. Here, here's what we would find if every single person watching this message were to take an ancestry DNA test. Here's what we'd find. None of us are 100% anything. None of us. Uh, uh, none of our great, 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 great grandmas are from America. Sorry. We're all stuck with each other. And you know what we'd find? 
is we find that there is a little bit of me in you. And there's a little bit of you in me. And <laughs> let this sink in for a minute. If there is a group of people in your life that you are particularly frustrated with, <laughs> there is a small chance you are frustrated with yourself. <laughs> There, there's, we are a conglomerate, a melting pot of a bunch of stuff. And sometimes race conversations are so black and so white as if there's no other colors in the room. And there are. Ladies and gentlemen, I, 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 we, we may not have realized this, but right now in America... Only 50% of the U.S. population under the age of 18 is Caucasian. By the year 2045, uh, the U.S. Consent Bureau of Consensus and Data Analytics of how they're looking at the population say that only 49% of America will be Caucasian by the year 2045. Our future is full of color, whether we like it or not. And I believe it's our duty as the church to lead the way. I believe it's our duty as people that have looked to Jesus to be an anchor for our soul, as we have looked to Jesus to say, hey, we're going to follow him. Where Jesus leads us is a place that isn't all that comfortable, but it's better than where we are. How?